It's the new year and you're looking to get a new car. Then head to Toyota's We Make It Easy sales event to find incredible deals on many of Toyota's most popular models, like Camry, Camry Hybrid, Corolla, Corolla Hybrid, Prius, Prius Prime, and even Highlander Hybrid. You'll find great ways to save with low payment leases and low APRs, not to mention huge cashback offers. So see your Toyota dealer today. We make it easy. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome to Virtual Meditation with Shiloh. Uh, hello? Today I, oh. we're working on forgiving ourselves for not knowing the difference between upload and download speeds before getting cable internet. <laughs> That's oddly specific. Repeat after me. I am not my cable internet. Wait, um, I, I, I don't have cable. I'm not a bad... It's my video calls more like video stalls. Uh, hey Shiloh, there's something... I will get AT&T Fiber. <laughs> And I will switch classes until you do. Slow upload speeds? You're not a bad person. You just need better internet. With 20 times faster upload speeds, AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience than cable. Get AT&T Fiber with no annual contract, limited availability in select areas. Call 1-877-ONLY-ATT. Check eligibility at att.com slash get fiber. Based on combined internet 1,000 wired up and download capacity versus major cable providers, one gig service with uploads of 35 megabits per second. Speeds vary, not guaranteed. Restrictions apply. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 311. What's up, everybody? Happy weekend. So I know it's a little odd that we're doing the Daily Drop this early, but I'm going on a climbing adventure later on tonight, and I have no idea how long I'll be. So I wanted to get the daily job done for you folks and out, make sure that we had our two episodes for the day, and keep everything moving in a streamlined fashion. Um, if anything breaks, that's super important. Tonight when I get home, maybe I'll record another episode, but more than likely, expect another episode at the usual time tomorrow morning. So tonight, on this episode, what we're going to talk about is Tara Palmieri and her appearance on The Hill recently, where, uh, Hills TV, excuse me, where, um, she appeared on a morning program to talk about her hosting the podcast Broken about Jeffrey Epstein. And if you have not listened to Broken yet, I I highly suggest you do. It's one of the very few podcasts related to this topic that I actually listen to as well. And Tara Palmieri has been fantastic, not just in this podcast, but throughout. And what she says here is very important, and and I really hope people take it to heart. I mean, it's one thing for, you know, me, your favorite resident moron, to tell you about this stuff. But it's another thing when you have someone like Tara Palmieri telling you about how this is two-way traffic, how this is both sides of the aisle. And I came into this whole entire thing thinking one way, and the evidence has completely changed my opinion about the players on the stage. There is no doubt that people on both sides of the aisle participated in making sure that Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell were operating in a smooth and unchecked manner. They didn't do it themselves, folks, okay? And it wasn't just the Republicans. And it wasn't just the Democrats. It was the scumbags on both sides. What do you think? These people really hate each other? When the doors close, they're having drinks and they're drinking their Cristal and they're laughing and swimming through their money like Scrooge McDuck. While you and me are busy hating on the, the, the QAnon poster or the so-called communist poster. It's so stupid. It is so dumb, okay? And it's obvious that they're trying to manipulate the Jeffrey Epstein case to make it just another cudgel to smack you around with politically. Another divisive issue. I even see people running around talking about, oh, save our children, some right-wing conspiracy. How can saving kids be a right-wing conspiracy? Get out of your echo chamber and think for yourself for a little while, please. And on the other side, I mean, I don't know how many times I have to hear about Tom Hanks is arrested and... No, he's not. No, that literally, that's not happening, okay? Sorry, that is not occurring right now. Can we deal in reality, please? And can we all understand 
that the people we're talking about, these politicians, if they have an R or a D next to their name, it does not matter. You do not matter. All that matters is them increasing their power. All that matters is their status being increased. And all that matters is they win their next election. And if they can get there by having the pitchfork people and the, and the torch people hate each other and fight in the streets, that is exactly what they'll do. And we keep falling for it over and over and over again. And that is why, my friends, you never see me wade into any of that bullshit nonsense on places such as Twitter. I don't want any part of it. In fact, I will not have any part of it. I won't be goaded into it. And I will not ever respond to your nonsense. Zero chance. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. I'm not here peddling you any books. I don't have nothing to sell you. All I'm here for is to keep on talking about this case on a daily basis. At least once a day. Mostly twice. But I don't, you know, people have funky motivations, right? And that's cool. Do it, do you. But me personally, I'm here for one reason and one reason only. And that most certainly is not to make any political points. Not during, not with this case. That's not what this case is about. And anybody who is making this a political cudgel to slap their opponents around with, I don't trust. And that goes for both sides of the aisle, folks. If every word out of your mouth is about, oh, the Republicans are involved with Epstein and they're the ones who did it. Well, you're probably in an echo chamber and you probably should take a step back from that confirmation bias buffet that you're getting fat on. And the same goes for the other side. It has become noise, folks. That's all it is, is noise. He said, she said, what about ism? Thankfully, there's somebody like Tara Palmieri who understands the stakes and understands that this is two-way traffic coming down both lanes, both sides of the aisle. Our article today is from the National Post. And the author is Chris Arnold. Headline, Epstein podcast host. Elites on both sides of the aisle now squirming over revelations. This article was uh, authored by Chris Arnold. Investigative journalist Tara Palmieri says there are people on both sides of the political spectrum in the U.S. with whom Jeffrey Epstein was affiliated high-profile figures across the aisle who are now scrambling to limit the fallout surrounding the dead pedophile. And that doesn't just mean current politician, folks. Remember, this has been going on for decades. So there are people who were in office previously who were more than likely caught up with Jeffrey Epstein, right? We know that he was visiting the White House when Bill Clinton was in office. Who else was he hanging around with? We know he was hanging out with Doug Band. So, again, it's not just current politicians, and sometimes I think that we get too caught up in the moment of the current uh, Donnybrook going on politically, and we don't think about the other people who help lay this groundwork. And I think it's important to remember that this has went on for decades, okay? So there are a lot of people on both sides of the aisle that are caught up in this shit. Paul Mary, the new host of the podcast Broken Seeking Justice, appeared on Hills TV morning program Rising, during which she discussed the alleged connections Epstein had with Republicans and Democrats alike. Hey, look, folks, it's all about the truth, right? At least for me, that's what I want. At the end of the day, I want to get to the bottom of this. And I want the people who were involved in facilitating this to face repercussions the same way that you or I would. That's not too much to ask, is it? In recent days, it has been reported by the Daily Beast that Bill Clinton, Epstein's ex-girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, and others sat for an exclusive L.A. meal in 2014, well after Epstein had been accused by at least one woman. Maxwell herself is now awaiting trial for enticement of minors, sex trafficking of children, and perjury. Epstein killed himself, allegedly, in a Manhattan jail cell last year before he could be tried for sex trafficking. 
And we covered that story, obviously, the Bill Clinton and Ghislaine Maxwell dinner. Of all the people in Los Angeles, Ghislaine Maxwell gets that nod. She's the one that gets the the head bob and, hey, yeah, come over to our table and have dinner with us. If that doesn't make you want to ask questions, I don't know what will. If that doesn't make you want to dig deeper to find out what the real story is, I don't know what will. Clinton says he knew nothing at any point about Epstein's crimes, that he was never at Epstein's private property in the Virgin Islands. Yeah, that's bullshit, okay? Point blank, period. And if you aren't questioning why Bill Clinton is lying about all of this, you might be one of those people that we were just talking about who has no business getting involved in cases like this with their stupid tribalism. Because Bill Clinton is up to his ears in this shit, folks. Up to his ears in it from the very beginning. Jeffrey Epstein's been visiting him since he was in the White House. Let that sink in for a minute, okay? However, court records from a defamation lawsuit between Maxwell and alleged Epstein survivor Virginia Roberts appear to indicate that Clinton flew to Epstein's island on a helicopter, Forbes has reported. Maxwell was an attendee at the wedding of Chelsea Clinton in 2010. And we all know that Maxwell ferried people on helicopters, right? She had her helicopter's pilot license. Another lie Mr. Dershy Dersh likes to run with. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Ghislaine was driving a hell, flying a helicopter and bringing people around. Shut up, Alan Dershowitz, okay? Shut your yap. However, Palmieri said it's not just Democrats who are in damage limitation mode. Yeah, you think? What about all of these other Republicans that haven't been named yet? That probably had business dealings with this man. What about the other, uh, the other people who were in charge when this guy got this deal? What, we're not going to talk about Mukasey? That's a name not enough people bring up, folks. And he was the acting attorney general when this deal was signed off on. I think that's a huge deal. And I think if we're going to go after Acosta, and we should, we should also be going after Mukasey and asking him hard questions as well. Republicans were banking on the fact that Democrats weren't going to ask about Epstein because of their connection with Bill Clinton, she said on the podcast. And the Democrats would say he has connections with President Trump. It's on both sides of the aisle, and it hits all structures of society. And that's why you don't see either campaign going hard in the paint on it, right? Both sides have ties. And if people on the right want to think that Donald Trump doesn't have ties to Jeffrey Epstein, you're crazy, you're naive, and you as well are in an echo chamber. And you as well are eating at the buffet of confirmation bias, unfortunately. At a certain point, she said, I think these people start to think they're untouchable and they kind of are. And that's really the crux of the situation, right? That's why we're here. These sons of bitches acted with impunity for decades and nobody stepped up to stop them. None of these dudes who walked into Jeffrey Epstein's house and saw all these pictures, none of these FBI agents, none of these prosecutors, and none of these presidents. And now, all these years later, Epstein is dead and Ghislaine Maxwell is rotting in a prison cell, but no other co-conspirators have yet to be arrested. There are several photos of Trump and Epstein together from the 1990s and early 2000s. Trump denies ever having a personal relationship with Epstein, despite saying in a 2002 New York Magazine feature about the dead financier, pedophile, that they had, by that point, long known each other. And I don't know, Trump just needs to stop lying about this. It's the same shit with Bill Clinton. It's the same coin, the same side of a different coin here, basically, right? Enough is enough already. Why don't you people just admit you had a relationship with this guy? If I was Trump, I would say, look, yeah, I had a relationship with him uh, and explain my relationship. But no, none of them do that. Instead, they use the marathon defense, right? Let's run as far away from this for as long as we can until we gas out. And Trump is no different. He has done the same thing. 
He's a lot of fun to be with, Trump said of Epstein at the time. It is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. No doubt about it, Jeffrey enjoys his social life. And look, it's it's makes me sick, okay? It makes me sick. The fact that Bill Clinton is having dinner with Ghislaine Maxwell after we know what Jeffrey Epstein is, the fact that Donald Trump is wishing her well after we know what Jeffrey Epstein and she is, is just so disturbing and disgusting that I almost don't have words for it, folks. This is the best we can do as leaders. And don't get me started on Biden, another guy that's being credibly accused by Tara Reid. What, everybody's just going to forget Tara Reid's allegations like she doesn't matter? That's a bunch of horseshit too, my friends. Palmeri, a former White House correspondent, is now hosting the second season of Broken Seeking Justice, which focuses on those around Epstein who are still alive, including the survivors of alleged sexual assault and his former associates. I think this story needs to pivot and be completely focused on these survivors and justice. And I hope after the election, whichever way it goes, because let's be real, folks, we have no control over that shit. What are the, our votes our votes matter, our votes count. Yeah, I don't believe it, all right? I don't believe it. The bureaucracy, these people, these bureaucrats, these unnamed bureaucrats that are in these three-letter organizations, CIA, FBI, NSA, they're the real power brokers. And we have no say about them, right? We don't even know who they are. These are the people that I'm worried about. The presidents come and go. They are what they are. It's the people that are there for 25, 35 years that I truly fear. Palmieri says she cares more about this story than any other she's covered in her career. I felt like the Jeffrey Epstein story is a reflection of our society, how we treat victims, Palmieri said, what people can get away with if they have enough money, enough power, and enough connections. And she's 100% right. That's what this case is about, folks. Please remember that. At least, you know, in my opinion, and I know, look, we all have our opinions, right? My opinion will get you a cup of coffee with a buck fifty down at the local corner store. But in my opinion, we should be focusing on these survivors and getting them justice, not trying to score political points. And I hope with I hope that after the election that we can focus on that more. And I hope the focus is more turned to justice in this case and not trying to politicize it at every turn. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at Bobby Capucci at ProtonMail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at ProtonMail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, folks, I will catch you all later, and I hope you all have a fantastic start to the weekend. Oh, yeah, and please, don't drink and drive, eh? All right, everybody. It's the new year, and you're looking to get a new car. Then head to Toyota's We Make It Easy sales event to find incredible deals on many of Toyota's most popular models, like Camry, Camry Hybrid, Corolla, Corolla Hybrid, Prius, Prius Prime, and even Highlander Hybrid. You'll find great ways to save with low payment leases and low APRs, not to mention huge cashback offers. So see your Toyota dealer today. We make it easy. Toyota, let's go places. Ooh, a fondue set. Now I need to find a coupon code. Not anymore, Susan. Capital One Shopping instantly searches for available coupon codes and automatically applies them at checkout. Wait, instantly? It's called shopping smart, not hard. Download Capital One Shopping to your computer for free and let it do the work for you. Don't mind if I fondue. Haha, <laughs> that's kind of cheesy. Capital One Shopping. It's kind of genius. What's in your wallet? Savings and available coupons vary. 